In this video lesson, we're going to go every, over everything you need to start up a Maya project file or to get a project started in Maya. So Maya has a, a very specific structure and setup and a lot of elements to it, a lot of layers to it, a lot of menus. <clears throat> so I'm going to go over every little way you can um, deal with the screen here, what you need to do, give you all the specific tools so you can get set up with the scene quickly in Maya and have it set up properly so it's got all the structures you'll need. So the first thing is you'll uh, load up Maya and it look like your regular windows here. You might get a four view window or you may have just a uh, perspective window here. You might just have a single view. So you can switch that by uh, space bar or you can get to some of the um, view menus over here. So you could go to quad windows here if you want, if you prefer icons. So there they are. So the first thing in the scene is, as you see, we have the grid layout. We've discussed grids, uh, briefly touched on them, but now we're gonna go over in detail how you actually manage your grid because that's basically the floor of your model and your scene. So we're gonna start with, um, the first thing I can do is I'm gonna make an object so we can actually see something. All right, so we're just gonna make a little cube here. Um, and I'll go over view controls again. So if you're in your scene here, the first one and the most essential one is always your tumble, tumble your camera. So that's moving it around. So that's gonna be your alt or your option key and your left mouse button. So we're gonna move it around. If you wanna change your view a little bit. And then if you wanted to pan, which means going side to side, then you'll have your alt or option key and your middle mouse button. And then if you want to zoom in on your object, then that's the Alt or Option key and your right mouse button. So here we go. Okay, so now here we go, there's scene. I'm gonna zoom back out because I'm gonna be showing the grid there. Okay, but I'm just putting an object in the scene just so we have something there. And I'm going to switch on, right now it's in shaded mode. So here's a couple quick little tips here for your, your modes, for your view modes that you can see at the top of your, um, your panel here. So here are some controls. We're gonna go over many of these in other lessons. I'm just gonna give you the basics. Uh, well, the first one is here's your grid. So here's you could switch your grid, your floor basically on or off. And uh, here's your default, which is your shade, smooth shaded all or shaded mode. You might wanna also be in wireframe sometimes. So there's wireframe. So we're gonna go back to shaded mode. And then sometimes I like to work with this, which is wireframe on shaded. So you can see everything. You can see the edges a little better. So I switched those on just so we can see the model a little better. Um, okay, so here's our grid. I'm gonna zoom around on a little bit. All right, now I wanna change this grid. If you can notice, this is, uh, here, let me uh, hit the space bar and go. Basically this cube is one by one by one, which corresponds to our grid here, okay? So let me go back to this window here. So we notice our grid, um, I might want this a little, just to go right to the edge there. So where you get to your, your grid controls is in, you can either go up here to display and you can go to grid, the viewports go to grid and you can go to this, which is your option or dialog box and you can click on that. Okay, and then this will come up and many, many Maya tools will have something like this. So this allows you to, well, it gives you a second layer of controls on things. And sometimes they even have uh, more layers of controls. Okay, I'm gonna close out of that. We can all, also access that this right here. So uh, you go on top of the button here and you hit the right mouse button and you'll see there's a couple little um, selections here. So you could switch on or off the grid or we could go to the grid options. There they go. All right, so as you see our grid is at 12 by five by five. Um, I probably don't want a number like that. I want a whole number, I mean a, a, a full uh, decimal base number. So I'm gonna type 10, okay? And then when you change a number in here, then you have to hit apply. Okay, so now it's changed. You see it's changed here. And I have five units spacing. So what I'm gonna do is I want that to match. So I'm gonna type that to 10 also. I'm gonna hit apply, okay. And five, I want one unit, so I want single units. Because basically, my, um, its default unit is centimeters. So, and Maya is um, pretty much based on a metric system. So, um, and I would thoroughly encourage using um, the metric system for the um, Maya. 
and to use um, 10 base numbers. You can use uh, Imperial English system and you can use other units, but you know, 10 base system is very good. Okay, so now let me scoot this over a little bit and zoom it out. So I'll have the option box open and then, but then I'll have the, the grid laid out over there too, so we can see it. So I might wanna make this a little larger so I can see some other controls that are gonna come up with the, um, with the grids. So I'm gonna increase this to 20. So I'll, I'll tell you what we're doing here. So I'm gonna hit apply. Okay, there we go. So basically this controls the length and width. This controls the length and width of our grid system here, like our grid plane, okay? So that controls length and width. This gives us our grid. So these are technically our grids, these lines here, the big dark ones. And the subdivisions, are the smaller lines within, okay? So you can also control these, you can change their colors as well. So say we wanted to change our subdivisions color to something lighter, you would hit apply. So now you would have this lighter color here. Sometimes I work with uh, something like that, or I could bring it back down here and um, I'm going to, I'm gonna change this here. So here's some different ways I can kind of change the looks of things. So I'm gonna go back to just kind of its regular default system. I'm gonna kind of leave it right there, okay? So that's a good, good way to deal with this. But here, I'm gonna show you a couple of things here too, which are kind of interesting, is um, I'm gonna add some numbers on the scene here. So here's, you can put some numbers on the axis. So we got numbers going on over here, which is very useful. Um, sometimes you might wanna have a little bit more precision to things. Um, I can also put numbers on the edges of things. That's, I kind of like that sometimes. Okay, so I'm gonna then hide them, which is a default. And if you ever decide you wanna just go back to normal, I, I, all option boxes always have these. You go to edit and you go to reset settings. And I'll go over this more in the future, but every time you use a tool that has an option, it's good habit to just go to reset settings. Because what happens is Maya will save whatever settings is you had for the last file or whoever was else was working in Maya. So you might wanna always start with a clean kind of uh, settings for a file, okay? So now I'm gonna hit space bar. I'm gonna go to the quad view windows, okay? So I'll move the dialog box away and you can see all the windows here, okay? And this, this box, you can scale it a little bit so in case you want to, like I want to put it over here, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what happens here. So I'm going to, this is in the orthographic grid numbers. So I'm gonna do this. Now you have grids, on, I mean, you have numbers on these grid lines, okay? And I find this one tends to work, along the edges tends to work a little bit better for windows such as this, okay? So um, there we go. Anyway, but we're not gonna use the numbers for this one. So it's just, I just wanna show everybody. Okay, so I'm gonna go hit hide. And okay, so no more numbers there, but we have changed our grids. Okay, so I'm gonna close that up. Okay, so now I have my object there. And um, now I have my grids set the way I want them. So now there's something in Maya that's uh, kind of important. It's a little tricky. Um, it gets people a little confused sometimes, but it's very important to Maya. And I will explain why and what we, why we, Maya does this and why we need this. But uh, the key things are, okay, so we have our object here. Let me pick on it. I'm gonna hit F, so it's zoomed out, okay. All right, so now I can, I can see that it's zoomed in, I can see it, and I have it in the other windows. Um, so what I wanna do is say, I just wanna save this cube out, okay. So over here is our input output. Uh, our file menu. So here's all our key things. I'm just gonna show you the things we need to know for now. New scene, of course, is if, if you just wanna get rid of your scene and clean your scene, so it's a new scene, okay? Open scene is if you have a file you've already saved and you wanna open it up. Uh, save scene, uh, I don't particularly suggest using save scene because that just saves the scene as uh, untitled, which is the, uh, the initial file that comes in with Maya. You wanna do save scene as, okay? So. Hold on one second, my dialog boxes are popping over. I have a dual window set up here. So the scenes come up here. Um, I don't wanna save anything here yet because I have to get Maya set up.
See, if you notice, there's all these different little um, file directories here, which are very important to Maya. So I'll, I'll be going over these in more detail, like as I said, in other classes, but you have all these different little, these are in a, what they call a Maya subdirectory. And I'm gonna show you in the next uh, window, like what's gonna happen with these and how to create this. This is very essential, very important to Maya. So um, let me cancel out of this. All right, so the key thing, and this gets students kind of confused at first, um, but we're gonna go over this right now. And, and you know, after a few times, you'll, you'll, you know, you'll get the hang of this and it'll be fine. So the key thing is, here's all our input output here. But what we wanna do is go down to here. It says project. Maya is very dependent on these things called projects. And let me pop this window open. These two, these two uh, buttons here, these two commands are gonna be very important. So the first thing is when you have a new project, you have to open up the project window. Okay, so here's our project window. Okay, so, this tells us what the current project is. This tells us where it's located. Um, this tells us, these are the file directories that will be uh, inside our, our new, what we're gonna do is we're gonna give it a name, we're gonna tell it where to go, and then there's gonna be these subdirectories in there. So basically when you have a Maya scene file, and when you produce models in the future, you're gonna have not just a file, not just a 3D graphics file, you're gonna have a scene file. And the scene file is basically a file folder with a whole bunch of subfolders. And each one of these folders, uh, a certain kind of data is gonna go in there. Okay, so you're gonna have like um, scenes. The scenes file is where the actual Maya geometry goes. And all this geometry goes in the scenes file. I mean, the scenes directory. Um, templates we're not gonna really use right now. Images, if you render an image, that's where you're gonna find them. If you're putting um, color, what they call texture maps onto your models, you're gonna put all the source files in this, it's called the source images directory. You're gonna put things there because Maya is very dependent on this file structure. Because when you do other things, when you go out to animate, when you go to render, Maya uh, sends out uh, output files to these different little parts. You also have a uh, transfer data. So this is where say you're bringing models from something else from another program like a CAD program or uh, another 3D modeling program or a sculpture program. This is where you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna put that data and it's gonna automatically come in, okay? So first thing is you go up here and you, um, you press new and it says new project. So we're, I'm just gonna go with the default right now, but here's where you would, you would type in a name for your project. So I'm just actually gonna just call it new project. Okay, I'm gonna do everything default. So it's gonna go, I, I created a directory on my desktop and I just called it Maya. So that's, that's where we're gonna put it. Okay, so I'm just gonna hit accept. Oh, I already have a directory now. So actually, you know what, let me give it another name. It didn't like that because I was doing a test before. So let me just call this, uh, class test underscore oh one okay so i'll do that so i'll hit accept there we go all right so now uh, i have that file in there okay or that uh, directory structure okay so now when i go to one uh, uh then the next thing you're going to want to do the first thing before you do anything else is you're going to go to set project um normally it it works fine you don't have to do um anything usually it default goes to there but sometimes it doesn't so it's always good to go to set project and especially if you start uh, Maya up new you start fresh it's always a good idea even if you're bringing a data file over and you read it in it's it's always important to do set project because later on when you like especially if you have texture maps in your scene or something they won't show up and you'll be like scratching your head like so where do they go so what you want to do is you go to set project okay uh, again, my windows are popping up on my dialog windows are popping up on the side. Um, so here we go. So you see I'm in directory C, users, Dami, Maya, and I had new project. That was the one, the original one I set, and then now I, I just created another one. So I'm gonna hit this one, it's class test 01. So I'm gonna hit set, okay? So this is very important. This is a really key part of things. Okay, and make sure, if you're not very organized with your files, make sure to get organized, because Maya likes organization. So uh, you're gonna need that because later on when these files start getting bigger, you start doing more complex you know, files, naming, all that kind of stuff is really important. Okay, so I'm gonna hit set, there we go. All right, so now I'm gonna go up to files and I'm gonna go down to um, save scene as, okay. Let me pull my dialog box up here. 
All right, so now if you notice up here, it's gone directly to it. Now it's in C, users, dummy, Maya, class, underscore, test, 01, scenes. See, it's in that file. Okay, so I'm gonna just call it box, okay? Or box, underscore, 01. I tend to use underscores. Um, I used to work, well, all the 3D graphics stuff used to be in Unix, and Unix doesn't like spaces. So just out of force of habit, I use the, um, underscore. Um, sometimes it's not a bad idea because in case you go to a Linux based system, like if you're working in the studio with Linux or if you're, um, you know, if you go to the web, the web likes things with, you know, underscores and with lowercase. So those are kind of good ideas, good uh, naming habits. Okay. So I'm going to go to file save as. Okay. There we go. So now say I want to clear my scene. Okay. I made my box. So I'm going to go file, new scene. There we go. It's all gone. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to file and I'm gonna go to open scene, okay? Pull my dialog box up over here. So there it is, there's my little file. So I'm gonna hit box, I'm gonna hit open. And it's gonna say save, no, I don't need to save. That's the, the default scene, untitled scene. So I'm gonna say, no, I don't wanna save that. Okay, so it's like don't save. Okay, there it goes, there's my box. All right, so I'm gonna hit shift F to frame in all, all windows. So there is our little box object, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some of the other things to this box that make it useful in a scene, okay? And I'm gonna go over some of these other windows. We kind of touched on the windows before, but now I'm gonna go over all what we do with all these different windows here, okay? So we did our Maya projects and um, the first thing I'm going to show you is, well, we did this a little bit in one of the earlier lessons, but over here, you can select your object in, your, in the outliner, okay? So now it's over there. But you notice over here, it's also popped up over here. Now this is what you call, you'll see it has a tab here, it's called the channel box. Channel box and layer editor, there's layers down here, which we're gonna go over layers in a second. Okay, so now your channel box, this is very useful because this is a, gra a graphical way you can actually access the information that goes into your, your object, okay? This is just hierarchical information. So this will tell you the big, larger groups of things like lights and if we had cameras, well, I mean, we have our cameras in here, if we had lights, if we had textures, things like that, and then you can grab things at the bigger level. This is the level where you can actually modify things. Like you see, there's a translate, there's a translate X, Y, Z, there's rotate XYZ, there's scale XYZ. We can switch something on or off. Like I can, I can type in here, I can type off. Okay, now the, the model's gonna disappear. And then I'm gonna type uh, on and it's gonna show back up. Okay, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit here and I'm going to uh, change the scale on this. Okay, so, so let me type in a uh, two here. Okay, so, but I'm just scaling in X direction. So yeah, you can do in three, three axes. Okay. So I'm gonna scale in Y. So let me try and type in a two there. So I'm gonna type there, okay? I can scale now in Z. So I'm gonna scale Z. So I'm gonna type in a Z. I mean, uh, uh, okay. So now I'm gonna hit Shift F. It says zoom out for everything. Like if I wanted to move, I knew I, this thing, you know, had to move a certain amount. I could go negative uh, five. Let's try that. Yeah, there we go. So it's going back because the the, the Z into into the camera is negative Z, okay? Now, so, uh, oops, so, uh, oh, oh, that's a good one. So if you uh, deselect it, then nothing, it disappears, right? So you can't do anything. So I gotta select it again. So I'm gonna go back to the channel box here. So I, I wanna get rid of that, that um, movement there. So I'll type zero, so then it gets back to the zero position, okay? So I'm going to, I'm gonna keep it at scale two, because that's uh, for, um, a later lesson, we're gonna, we're gonna have it at that size, okay? So that's where we can access some of this information. Um, we can also, last time I showed you renaming in here, so if you double click on here, it'll, it'll, you can change its name. Or I can go actually access that information here as well. So, oops, let me get off the, let me put it in the select mode. All right, so I'm gonna call this, I'm gonna get rid of the P, that's for um, polygon. So I'm gonna hit delete for polygon. And I'm going to give it an, underscore and I'm gonna go to zero one. The reason I give it, pat, it's called number padding because if I do multiple objects, eventually if I get over 10, you're gonna need what they call padding or if you get over, you know, 100. So if you need three places, so um, that's why you need a zero or zeros in the object. So for this, we just have one cube, so it's fine. 
But anyway, so then I'm going to click in here. Okay, so now let's set and I'm gonna click it again just so it's selected. So if you look over here, the name is here in the channel box. But if you also notice over here in the outliner, the name has changed as well too, right? So you can change it in either of these two spots. And there's a couple other spots where you can change it in the future as well, like something called the hypergraph. You can go and get to. There's a lot of different ways to get to get to information in Maya or get to the, the core of the models here. Okay, so there's another uh, thing I want to show everybody here as well. There's something down here called inputs. So when you make a model, uh, Maya has. There's the object here, but underneath it is the actual components of the model. So this, we can, we can change the scale here. We can change the subdivisions. And let me, let me do the subdivisions right now. So I'm gonna type in two, because we already changed the scale. I'm gonna type a two. So look at that. Now that's giving us a line here, okay? I'm gonna type in a two here, okay? And I'm gonna type in a two here. So that's gonna give us, well, Align in this direction. So now, these are different parts to the model here. So let me also turn on uh, wireframe, on shaded, and all the other windows here, so you can see it in each one of these. Okay, so let me uh, hit the space bar here, and I can show the model. It's going around. So now, now it has these different elements to it, right? So when I pick on it, you'll see it has these different like uh, lines and and parts to it. All right, so this now is going to go up to here. This is going to, I'm going to start showing you a couple little elements up here. Um, these in the status line are um, some different, up here is different ways to select and control models. So I'm just going to show you the, the uh, most base level subsets right now, just to get you started in Maya. Um, we're gonna deal with these two right now and I'm gonna show you how this works in a few moments. So this is object mode, this is a component mode and that's hierarchy mode. Uh, and also too, just so you know, um, here's where we have we set up our grid snap. So last time I, I showed how to, to move something so everything moves exactly on, on the, um, the grid points on the axes. So you can turn that off, you can turn it on. Now it's now you have free movement, you can move in any direction. If you turn it on, it, it will be constrained to moving along the axes. And then in future lessons, we're gonna go over these as well. This is snap to curve, this is snap to, ver to vertex, or snap to points. So um, those will be useful at a later date. So okay, so now I'm picking on subject and I have it, it's selected. Um, this is what you call object mode. So this is when, you know, thing is, is, in, is an object. And um, let me show you this. This is component mode. So now when I select the object, it's gonna look different. It's gonna turn blue. And uh, some students have picked on that mode and didn't know what was going on. This is different. So this is now if I hit on these little points here, you see they turn red. Um, this is the components of the object. So this is what the object is made of, those lines I just made. So uh, the cube, when you bring it in, is just a um, cube, you know, it's just a, a, a form, it's just a six-sided cube. So, but now it's got these different sub components, okay? So these are what they call vertices. So I'm gonna I'll pick on one. If I pick on it, it's gonna turn green, or well, when, I, when I'm on it, it's green, and then when I get off, it's gonna turn yellow, right? So I'm gonna pick on these. They turn green, so now they're selected. These, um, I'm gonna go over to our, um, I'm gonna turn off the grid control, grid snap. This is, we're gonna get to this, then the next few lessons, we're gonna show you how to start modeling things at this level um, on, the on the 3D models, but not for the moment. But anyway, so that's, that's how you can get to the components of an object, okay? And then if this, this is here, it's called an edge and this is a face. So well, I'll show you how to work with all of these and then get to, you can really you know, get to a deep level of working on models in Maya, which is great. So anyway, okay, so now I wanna get out of this mode. Somehow, you know, especially early students get in this mode, they don't know what's going on, they don't know what to do. You just go up here to go up to object, object mode and then boom, you're off, okay? So now we're back in just regular object mode and everything's good. Okay, so there's another thing is 
hierarchy. So this is the hierarchy. So if I pick in hierarchy, that'll also just look like it's getting picked. I need to make a hierarchy. So let me make a few more objects in here. Um, I'm gonna show you a couple other tools in here which make making a model really good. Uh, first thing is I'm gonna go, I'm gonna make another sphere, okay? Or I'm gonna make a sphere and I'm gonna actually copy some spheres. Okay, so I got a sphere in here. I'm going to zoom out. I'm gonna do this in the front view. So I'm gonna to go to the front view. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, okay? I'm gonna turn my grid snap back on. I'm gonna to go to move. So I'm gonna hit the move key there and I'm going to move it. So I'm gonna move it over here. So now I got a sphere there, okay? So now I'm gonna name the sphere in something similar to the cube. So I'm gonna call it, um, actually, let me just take the, take the P out, delete the P and I'm going to go over here. I'm gonna go underscore zero one, okay? So yeah, now I have a sphere and I named it down very specifically because when I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you again how to, I'm gonna show you a few different ways to duplicate an object. So we're gonna to go to edit and we're gonna to go to duplicate, okay? So now you notice, now it just copied another object in there and when I type in a number like that, now it's gonna just add on another number. So now I know it's gonna work sequentially. So it doesn't look like it has happened here because the, the sphere is sitting in the same position. So now I just have to move it up, okay? I'll move it up and I'll move it over, okay? So now I'm gonna pick it and you can go to edit. Uh, you can also do hotkeys. There's a hotkey there. So if whenever you see any of these, these are hotkeys. Uh, so when you get to start getting to be more expert, you, you don't actually even use the menus anymore. You start doing these things. So, okay, so I'll, I'll be over here. So I'm gonna hit control D, okay? Doesn't look like anything happened, but I look over here in the outliner, something's happened. So I move this over there and I'm gonna move down and then Boom, there it is, so that's our next one. All right, here's another way to copy something. So I'm going to have it in the move um, control and I'm gonna hit the shift key and I'm going to, if you notice it's turned, it says clone there. So now I'm going to move it down, okay? All right, so now I have sphere number four there. So I'm gonna move this over. There we go. Okay, so now we have all these little objects here. Now we have something that's got something going on here. All right, so now I'm, I'm, I'm back out to the, the four windows. I just hit the, the space bar and I'm gonna hit shift F. So everything's all uh, zoomed out, framed in all the scenes here. So I'm gonna create a hierarchy. And, but before I do that, I'm gonna put everything on layers. So I'm gonna show you how to make layers over here. So the first thing is if you just wanna make a single layer, you can just create a layer, okay? So now I've just created a layer. And then I'm gonna pick on object, right? Let me get into pick mode, so I'm not doing anything. So, okay, so now I'm on select mode. All right, so now I have, I've selected the cube, I've got this layer, I'm gonna go over to the layer, right? I'm gonna click on the layer with my left mouse button, and then I'm gonna hit the right mouse button, and I'm gonna hit add selected objects, okay? So now that's on this layer. So now I can do things like this. You see this little, little button here that says V? I'm gonna switch it on, switch it off, switch it on, switch it off. I can do other things. I can change its view mode so I can still see it, but I can't do anything to it. So the first thing is um, called template mode. So you just see it as kind of a gray wireframe. So you can't really do anything. So here I'm trying to select on it, but nothing will happen, okay? But if I, if I select wider, it's gonna, the other things are still active. Right? So, but say I wanna actually see it, I just don't wanna be able to select it. So I can get on a template mode and I'll turn it to R, which is reference mode. So you see this little R there. So now if I do a window select here, you'll see I, I, I'm picking over the, the cube, but it won't select, but it's in the scene so I can see it, okay? Okay, so that was the way to explicitly put an object on a layer and to control its, 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 its view, its view state. Okay, so now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick this object and it might have made it even simpler. You can just hit this button here and it's gonna automatically make a layer and put the object on the layer, okay? And then you can, you can test that out here, okay? So I'll, this is a really nice handy little tool here. Okay, so I've made another one. I'm gonna make another one. I'm gonna put each one on their own individual layer. 
you'll find in the future having lots of layers will be really nice because when you have really complicated objects. All right, so now um, Maya does an odd thing here. It, it puts things in layered down. Um, if you want to move layers around, what you can do is you can go to this, you can move the selection up. So if you want the first layer on the, on the top. Okay. Move, and then this one I can move down if I want. So you, you just play around with these. These are all pretty cool. Um, and then if you want to turn everything in the reference mode, you just click all, all of them are, okay? But interesting thing here is, okay, in the scene, so this controls their state in the scene, in the viewport, in the workspace. You can't select anything here. But you still can select over here in the outliner. So this is handy. Sometimes you don't want to be messing around the scene, but you need to actually get to something very specifically here. Okay. So now everything's still selected there and that's, that's all fine. Now we're going to, we're, we're going to make a group. So now we have all these different ways to control how the, the object is viewed. Now we're going to, I'm going to show you a way to put everything together into a group. So we're going to go to edit and then you go to group or you can go to control G if you want. So I'm going to hit group. Okay. There we go. So now this is a group. So if I hit this little button here, the little plus or minus sign, this opens up the group. So basically the group is basically like a file folder within Maya. So this is very handy because especially when you start getting into big scenes, you're gonna wanna start grouping things together. And I'll tend to, when Maya tends to, um, there's a couple of naming conventions that have gone since the old days that like you can do GRP underscore 01 for group. And then um, for layers also, you can do L, Y, R, underscore, O, one. Okay, I'll save scene. Okay, so you, how do you get to that? You double click on that. And that's how you get to your layer naming. I'm gonna copy these and control C. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna rename all these because I'm gonna save this file out. Just one minute. Okay, so now they have their nice little structure names. And later on in the future, you'll see, don't, don't worry about this right now, but this is an old um, Maya naming convention system, which gets very useful, especially if you start making very complex scenes. All right, so now we have our group here. All right, so now, now I can introduce you to this last little button here. This is for your hierarchy mode. So um, let me un reference all these objects here. All right, so now if I'm in this mode, I can pick everything individually, right? And I can still, if I go over here, I can move, each thing moves individually, okay? Control C. But now if I wanna move everything together, what I do is I go over to this button and this is our hierarchy and I can pick things by hierarchy. So now when I select it, now you notice, now there's one pivot right here in the middle here and everything moves together, okay? So again, I'm setting everybody up for more complex modeling, complex scenes and complex scene control. So now you have a group. They have a group and you have layer controls. So you can switch things on and off. You can move things around as a group. Um, if I want to, I, within a group, I can still move things individually. So if I want to move this piece over here, so say that, I want to move that there, okay? Um, I'll go back to hierarchy, move it. So now, so now this is gonna stay relative here, but the whole group is now gonna move, okay? So I'm gonna get rid of that movement there. And then if you notice here, so, let, so the group has its own um, coordinates here. Okay, so you can scale things up as a group, but then the individual object is still its own object. So I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna click on this to um, object mode. Okay, so that will allow me to pick on this. Now, if you notice, um, this has a uh, 
its old translate number. So I could turn it and move it back to where it was. Okay. So now you see that number there has changed. Don't get too worried about that stuff, but this stuff gets really useful in the future. So, okay, so there you go. That's uh, a whole hierarchy scene. And I'm, what I'm gonna do is I tend to put things all on reference mode when I'm about to finish up a file. Because that way, when I open the file up again, I won't pick on anything. I can't pick on anything. So it's all kind of clean. Or if I'm handing this file off to somebody, it doesn't, they don't bring it in and then somehow it's, you know, gets kind of jacked up or, you know, they're, they, they move something and they don't know because you're not there, right? Because a lot of times you're going to work on projects um, and you're going to be sending things off to people digitally in far away places. So, okay. Um, and that's about it. So now then I'm going to go, I'm going to go to save scene as, okay. Let me move my dialog box over here. So now I had box 02, I mean 01. So I'm going to call this box 02. And I tend to like to give uh, name, like very descriptive names to things. So I'm going to give it, I'm going to call it hierarchy. So I know that it's got a hierarchy just so if I open this later, I'll remember this was a hierarchy. Um, for this lesson. Okay, so I'm going to go and file save as. Okay, so now there's another thing too. The last thing I want to um, talk about in just dealing with files in Maya is I want to talk about exporting and exporting a different file formats. So because if you start working on these projects, you may not only be in Maya. You may be importing files from other programs. You might be exporting to other programs as well. Like say we want to send this out to uh, like a 3D printer that you don't have to send it out in a certain kind of file format. Or if you want to send it out to a, a different kind of animation program, you can make the meshes in here and send it to that program. Or if you want to send it to a sculpting program, especially. So that would be over here. So then we would go to file and then you can go to export all or export selection. So you could pick an object if you want to send out just a specific object or if you want to hit export all. Here also to the options box, dialog box is very important, especially here. So you're going to want to go to export all. You're going to hit that button. And this is going to give you a dialog box of the different type of files. So up here in general options, it's going to tell you um, what are the file formats you can export out? So also too, I'm gonna to go to reset settings. So the default is Maya binary. Okay, so there are different file formats in here. There's Maya binary, that's the, uh, that'll give you an MB um, file extension, which is Maya's uh, native um, format. Uh, you can also do a Maya ASCII file, which is MA. Um, sometimes it's good to save to that format because in case when Maya, sometimes when it changes, um, when new versions come out, sometimes it doesn't, has trouble reading older files. So sometimes that's, that's a good idea. Um, there's so many different file formats in here, but um, the key ones you might come across are IGES, which is typical for um, surface files and CAD files. So if you have a NURB surface file, that'll be an IGES format. STEP is a very common industrial format that goes from a lot of different kinds of um, programs. Wire format is the old alias format, which is a format from the old car um, design days. DWG is a format and DXF you'll see, especially from AutoCAD. DXF is one of the oldest 3D formats around. Um, STL, which you see right here, um, that's for stereolithography. That's the one of the original um, 3D printing file format. So that's very important. You know, 3D printers tend to take STL files. OBJ, this is a super important file format. Getting a little older now, but super important format for trading, especially in animation programs. That was generally an exchange format for anim uh, animation programs. And now FBX is starting to become pretty, pretty uh, highly. There's I just again also, which is um, the industrial format. And FBX is pretty important because it was then especially this is a format made by Autodesk, especially to deal with its different animation programs and different kinds of programs like 3D Studio and things like that. Um, so FBX is something you'll see a lot of, but yeah, so these are all the different formats and we'll get, we'll get more into this stuff later. Okay. All right. So that's about it. That's it for this lesson and on to the next one. Okay. Here we go. Let me finish this up here. Okay, we'll hit new scene and there we go. File is done and we'll see you at the next lesson. Okay, bye.